The following is a paid advertisement. The views expressed are the sole responsibility of the advertiser. Put the power back in your hands. This is Behind the Law with attorney Justin Clark. Welcome to Behind the Law and happy weekend to you. Michaela running a little bit late today, but she will be up here in just a moment. Remember, we are here live. If you have any questions at all, 321 282 one zero five five excellent show lined up for you today two really separate topics number one we're going to talk about debt your debt is at an all-time high right now you have student loan debt credit cards mortgage debt irs debt what do you do when you feel that debt piling up when you feel at the end of the month you have no money left over but really, we're also at a time where the real estate market is as hot as it's ever been many of you are now selling your real estate and you are flush with cash what do you do with that cash in this situation? Or maybe you're selling a business. What do you do with that cash? John Ledford will join us to tell you how to structure that cash to where you're not whacked with taxes and how you can really grow that money. It's a wonderful show lined up for you. But quickly, before we go, new watch, costly owned jewelers, the only place I trust for my jewelry, whether I'm buying gifts or stuff for myself. It's more gifts than things for myself. A quick message from Casa Leon as Behind the Law continues. And here we are at Casa Leon Jewelers. I'm wearing my beautiful watch from here. You have a necklace, uh, earrings. And a ring. And a ring. Oh, wow. You're, <laughs> Michael you're, M. And, and we buy all of our jewelry here we at do. Casa Leon. And we do so because of trust. They've been doing this since 1946, Michaela. And it takes a lot of trust to be able to stay in business that long. Proud to be joined by the owner of Casa Leon. Renee is here. Renee, how important is your client's trust to you? It is extremely important. And this is something that we have worked very, very hard to achieve and to gain loyalty from our customers. I see all of these five-star reviews yeah, five everywhere. Review everywhere. It's pretty amazing. Uh, tons of reviews. That's because we do protect our name and our reputation extremely well. Yeah. You do a little bit of everything here, it seems. You have uh, wedding jewelry. You've got engagement rings, wedding rings, watches. But you permanent also jewelry. permanent jewelry is, is pretty <laughs> I exciting. Saw your thunder, sorry. You did. I know. Sorry. I, don't know I don't know if I like that or not. <laughs> <laughs> She's a, but, I know. but you do custom jewelry here as well. We do. We have uh, our studio, uh, and we have uh, Pedro on a computer. He can design just about anything you can think of. And we have a uh, machine, uh, that uh, $55,000 machine, that will create any wax that we, uh, we want to cast on. He's doing, done it for my mom. I know. So, she loved yeah. it, too. Yeah, uh, that's good. Doing a great job here, obviously. We will always continue to shop here. I put a QR code on the screen right now. Take your phone out, scan it, and do yourself a favor. Visit Casa Leon Jewelers today. All right, welcome back, and welcome the beautiful Michaela Nichols to the stage. Hello, Michaela, how are you? Great, I'm You're, so happy to be here. I know you are. You're the voice of the people at home. You're not a lawyer. I am a lawyer. You ask the questions that they have at home. Isn't yeah, that right? Yeah, when, when you take a beat, yeah, I do. <laughs> I but that's hard, because you're going to do a monologue here. So. No, I'm not going to do a monologue. Okay. No, 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 no. no. I, want right. you to, I want you to jump in any time. I'll try my very darndest. All you have to just cut me off anytime you want. All right. I'm serious. Perfect. You have carte blanche to cut me Thank off you. at any point in the show. How is that? And you know you do. It's not like you're scared of me. I'm not. <laughs> so don't act like you have to raise your hand. Just cut me off anytime okay. you want. Get to your point. Here's Go what ahead. we're going to talk about today. As Americans, we have now hit an all-time high in debt. Credit card debt, all-time high. Student loans, completely out of control. Our mortgage debt is significant. And a lot of people have IRS debt as well. What do you do in that situation? I mean, that, that is the question. I know with you, Michaela, you've always been uh, very cognizant of not having any debt at all. Yeah. Is that correct? That's very true. And why do you feel like you want to have no debt? Because I don't want to owe anyone anything, ever. You Never. know, yeah. ever. But here's what happens in life a lot of times. And I know you were raised to have no debt. A lot of us have a job. We get a W-2 income, so we know exactly what's coming in every month. When you start taking out the taxes, you start taking out your medical insurance, your contributions, what we're making, even if you're making 100 grand a year, 150 grand a year, when you have kids and a family, that money does not go very far. It just doesn't. And, and a lot of us get reliant upon the credit cards and other forms of debt. And it just gets to a point where, where it doesn't make sense anymore to work hard all month. And then you have nothing left over at the end of the month because you're paying back 
all of this debt. So, so start with credit card debt here for one. Credit cards are, are not as scary, I would say, as student loans and IRS debt, but they also will keep you up at night. And, and credit cards are, are things that you want to pay, but you can look at other options to deal with them. Sometimes you want to refinance your house and, and pay them off by doing a refinance. But also sometimes that it's the better way to go for families to actually file bankruptcy. Because if you file bankruptcy chapter seven or chapter 13, you're generally gonna wipe out every ounce of credit card debt you have. And it becomes a really freeing experience. And everyone comes to me and says, well, Justin, I don't wanna do bankruptcy because it's going to ruin my credit. And for someone who has already not been paying their credit card debt, let me tell you, your, your credit is already in the dumps. In fact, bankruptcy can help your credit. Bankruptcy can help raise your credit score because it's already down here. In fact, when we do bankruptcy for someone at the firm, we get this very exhaustive credit report and it shows me what their score is today and what it'll be in 12 months and inevitably it actually goes up significantly. It's helping your debt to income ratio. So many times, not all the time, many times bankruptcy can actually be a huge benefit to your credit score, believe it or not. So it's worth, I think, having that conversation. If you're up at night, every night, stressed about your debt, bankruptcy is a conversation that is worth having. We have people in my office all the time who we say, I don't think bankruptcy is the right way to go, but I have families in my office also who bankruptcy is the way to go, and I know it's a life-changing decision for them. I don't like it when people judge people for filing bankruptcy because I know what a struggle it can be. I, you know my mother, I grew up with a, a single family household. She was raising three of us, making very little money and, and it's tough, you know? Mm -hmm. It's very, very hard out there for, for families. So I understand the need to file bankruptcy at times, I do. And I don't like it when people judge it. If you have questions about this, there is a QR code on the screen, or you call the phone number on the screen, 321-282-1055. I have also, you hear about student loans all the time now, very political hot button issue. Uh, we're at a point in time now where student loans are easier to deal with than they've ever been in the past. It's still not super easy, don't get me wrong, but there are so many more options out there now than there were even a year ago or two years ago. I'm not getting political about student loans. I will tell you I did not believe that they should all just be wiped out for everyone. I certainly didn't believe that. But the good news about all this debate over the last couple years is more options are out there for you now with dealing with student loans. So don't let them get you super scared. The one thing I will tell you about student loans though, unlike credit credit cards where a credit card if you don't pay it has to sue you. Student loans do not. They just send you a letter and essentially start garnishing your wages, taking your tax return. They have a lot more power than other types of debt. Student loans are much like IRS debt. The IRS doesn't have to sue you either. You owe money to the IRS, they literally send your boss a letter, boom, your money starts coming out of your, your bank account or your check every week or two weeks. Also they can send this letter to your bank where you have your money and they can just take the money right out of your checking account, savings account, uh, to pay off the IRS debt. So IRS debt and student loan debt, certainly types of debt you wanna get out ahead of. You, you don't wanna sleep on those types. Credit cards take longer. Uh, and then mortgages, okay? More, go ahead. You just keep going. No, I want you to no, ask I've, questions. I, I have no room to. Mortgages, okay? A mortgage, oh, most people have a mortgage. Most people don't pay cash for a house. Most people have to take out a mortgage because it's a huge investment. Or up until recently, it's made more sense to actually take out a mortgage and invest the cash that you have because the mortgage rates were lower than what you can make on your investment. That's kind of balancing itself out right now with the mortgage rates going up. Uh, but here's what I've seen when it comes to mortgage debt recently. So over the last three years, obviously we've been in this pandemic and a lot of these banks would just call you up and say, hey, uh, pandemic, we, we know that you're probably struggling. Do you want to go on a forbearance or go on a deferment? And a lot of people are like, sure, well, I won't pay for a few months, see how it goes. Now what's happening is the bank's calling you back and saying, I hope you enjoyed that forbearance. Now you owe nine months at once. It's not a deal where you can just pay it back over time. They're calling back and saying, okay, you owe us nine months at once. And you know, if your mortgage is two grand, three grand, that's a significant chunk of money that you're having to come up with. And, and it's really scaring a lot of people right now and really kind of disturbing that the banks did this, but it's the same thing that we've seen these banks do over and over and over again. Like when a hurricane rolls through, they'll say, oh, we'll put you on a deferment for a few months thinking that, okay, you'll just start paying again after a few months, but that's not how it works mostly. 
how, how they normally do it is they'll call you and say that you owe us all of these months all at one point in time, and people don't have that money sitting around. Some people do, but most of us don't have 20, 30 grand sitting around where you can just write that check, you know? So it's tough. So debt for me has been a huge part of my career, uh, a rewarding part of my career, where I really feel like we're helping families change their financial life. And Michaela, here's something that you might not understand yet, but when you have all of this debt and you have all of this stress, raising a family is an important thing for people, of course, but when you're stressed all the time, what happens next? When you're carrying around all of this stress, your health goes next. I've seen too many of you live with this financial stress that literally became actual health problems down the road, not just mental health problems. I'm talking about health problems and, and heart attacks and high blood pressure. This financial stress on families creates medical problems down the road. The good news is there are things that you can do. So don't let the stress of your financial issues ruin your life when you have things to do. But it's weird as well, because we're going through this phase right now where the real estate market is skyrocketing. Over the last two years, it's gone up so much, it's, it's been incredible. And a lot of families have decided to sell their home. And now they're dealing with a big chunk of cash, that cash they've never seen before. And it makes me nervous because I think they don't necessarily know what to do with it. How do you protect it? How do you make it grow? Also, a lot of businesses have been selling over the last couple years as well. And for a business owner, when you, when you get that big check at the closing table, that's a very important decision what you do with it. And no one better to ask than John Ledford, the CEO of Fortress Wealth Group. We love John, of we course. Do. John's and great. we're going to ask him this. So you've sold real estate, you've sold a business, you have an influx of cash. What do you do with it after this quick break as Behind the Law continues? Did you know that filing for bankruptcy can help you lower your mortgage or car payments or potentially help you eliminate your IRS or credit card debt? I'm attorney Justin Clark. If you find yourself living paycheck to paycheck, call me now or visit youhavepower.com for a free consultation. Do I ever have a very special gift for you today? Compliments our good friends over at Universal Roof and Contracting. 15% off your roofing job. The roof is the most important part of your house. No doubt about it. Uh, welcome, my good friends, as always, Justin and Corey Heil. How are you today? Good, man, good. good. Thank the you. Roof is the most important part of the house, but sometimes deciding who your roofing company is going to be is the most important decision as well. Culture is everything. Sure. When determining who's going to do your roofing job, Universal, the culture over there blows me away. Trustworthy. Tell me about the culture at Universal. Yeah, I mean, 30 years in the making, right? Family-owned, veteran-owned, same name and ownership over the past three decades. We're so proud to be so rooted in Orlando, and we have we have offices in Jacksonville and Southwest Florida, but the honest approach, the integrity we carry, working transparently with insurance companies and homeowners alike, I mean, we approach roofing the way an honest company really should. Trusted by some of the biggest sports teams in Florida as well. That's right. That's right. We uh, this past season we were the uh, one of the partners with the Jacksonville Jaguars, which was awesome. Um, they had a great season this, this year too. And then uh, just coming next month, the XFL, the Orlando Guardians. Uh, we are the official roofer for the Orlando Guardians, so we're excited to go out to those games and see everybody there. So yeah. it'll be great. A roof can be expensive. You created great programs to make this roof not cost prohibitive for me. Yeah, I mean, last thing we're going to do is take food off people's plates to afford a roof. So we have a ton of flexible financing plans that just keeps things very. Uh, liquid for homeowners, even if they don't want to use their own money, even if they have it at the yeah. time, you know, so we offer that as well for every roof replacement. I have this QR code on the screen right now. Get your phone out or go to their website, but the QR code will go directly to Justin and Corey, and literally you get 15% off, but guys, you're going to come to my house and tell me what I really need, honestly. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Free inspection, first of all. It does cost nothing for us to come out. We're going to sit down with you hear what you like about your roof, what you don't like about your roof, what problems you've had, and come up with a custom scope of work that makes sense for oh, you. Always so. a pleasure to see you both. There's only one company we trust when it comes to roofing, that is Universal Roof and Contracting. 
Welcome back to the show. So the opposite of debt is obviously having cash. We are in unprecedented times real estate wise. And I remember a day in 2007, eight, everybody was underwater on their real estate. Now, mm -hmm. virtually everyone is not underwater. It seems like we all have equity in our homes. And a lot of you have been selling your homes, which means you have an influx of cash, maybe cash like you really haven't seen before. And I've seen a lot of mistakes made when that cash gets into your bank account. So what do you do? with an influx of cash. And this is not just real estate. This is an influx of cash really uh, across the board. What do you do? Because there are things that you can do. Joined by the founder, CEO, the everything over at Fortress Wealth Group, John Ledford is here. John, how are you, sir? I'm great, how are you too? Good. I'm doing great. I'm great, thank you for asking me a question, <laughs> awesome. John. Good, very yeah. good. <laughs> so, you know, more than maybe ever before, especially with real estate, people have been selling their real estate the last couple of years and really coming out ahead. Yeah. And then they have this money, cash money, sitting around and don't really know what to do with it. When people come to you with an influx of cash, what do you tell Tell them. So it's interesting because, first of all, debt's a, or this is a lot more fun to talk about than debt. <laughs> yes, it is. So, but I did enjoy the first part of the show. But, but it's interesting because real estate over time, you've got real estate investors who have invested in real estate for their entire careers. And then we have some episodic real estate investors over the last you know decade or so. Yeah. But historically, people oftentimes selling real estate would just automatically do a 1031 exchange. Right. They would sell an old piece of real estate that's fully depreciated. They would exchange that into a new piece of real estate that's fully depreciated. Appreciated. They keep doing that for their lifetime when they pass away, get a step up in basis, all that good stuff. And so historically, it was almost always put it back in real estate. But the very interesting thing that's happened over the last few years with price increases is a lot of times people will come to me and say, hey, Historically, I just do an exchange, but I don't know that I want to sell highly valued real estate to reinvest into highly valued real estate. And maybe there's going to be an inflection. So what do I do? So a lot of times with folks, we talk through a 1031, but we also talk through other techniques that we find not a lot of people are chatting about, one of which is a charitable remainder trust. That's a tool that sometimes is used. We're actually selling or gifting the asset to the charity. Charities don't pay taxes, so when they sell it, there's no taxes due. And then they pay you an income stream for the rest of your life, often your life and your family's life. Wow. And then ultimately, the assets are gonna go down to the charity. The advantage of that is you actually get all of the money on the sale because none goes to Uncle Sam, and you get typically get higher rate of interest being paid directly from the charity. So if someone's charitably minded, it's a phenomenal strategy. If you're not charitably minded, and no qualifiers there, you know, no judgment one way or the other, but a lot of times people say, that's amazing, but what if I want to control the asset? So with a 1031, oftentimes you may or may not be able to control the asset. With a charitable trust, you can't control the asset. But there's another animal out there called a deferred sales trust, and the deferred sales trust allows you to bypass or defer the taxation, invest the assets in a balanced portfolio almost any way that you would want to, and then you choose when and how much and if you're going to be taxed in the future based upon the income stream you'd re you would get back. So we find a lot of clients opting for that strategy. So that's, the, that's on the tax side. Right. But if you're just, you sold something and now you've got cash and you're wondering what do I do? Again, you've got this question now, do I redeploy that money into real estate? Do I buy a business with those assets? Do I invest back into the markets? The cool thing about investing in the markets today is that for the first time in over a decade, we have somewhat normalized interest rates. So you can go buy a bond and make six or seven percent or something like that interest on your money. You can go downstream and maybe tax-free earn three or four percent. We we have a project and it's just one project. This is not a solicitation, but a, but a, a project that involves self-storage, where you can actually invest, receive about a ten percent tax-free rate of interest on that investment. Um, and it's because of how it's structured, and there's a lot more to it. Call our office if you have any questions. But um, there's a lot of things out there that go beyond just plain vanilla, invest it where the money came from. And that's what we kind of coach people through. Got it. And look, if you have questions about this, you have cash sitting around, or maybe you're not even happy with the financial advisor that you have, I highly recommend hitting the QR code on the screen or calling the phone number. I'll connect you with John right away. And John, and here's a question I get a lot too. Sure. And I don't know that I know the answer. That's why you're here, <laughs> I guess. It's all right, so I got some cash in. I've got some cash in the checking account, savings account, some investments over here. 
I mean, how much do I leave in just like a checking and savings account? I have uh, no idea. Yeah, so, so you know, because I've been doing this a long time, I've developed a story around almost every question. Yeah. <laughs> and, so, um, and so I developed this story with people, and, and most of what I do is, is trying to get people to laugh and engage in their own yeah. financial lives. So I have what I call the worst day scenario. <clears throat> and I've always told people, those rules of thumb that say you should have three months or six months, those are all great. But I prefer the worst case scenario, the worst day scenario. The so worst day scenario. The worst day okay, scenario. Like so it goes this. like this. You wake up in the morning, but it's not 5, which is your usual time. It's more like 3.30. And the reason you're awake at 3.30 is because you're really hot. In fact, you're sweating like a pig because your air conditioner's gone out. And you're going to have to hire someone to come out. And in this worst case scenario, you have to replace an air conditioning unit. So you can quantify what that would cost. That might be 10 or 15, whatever the number is. Yeah. You go to the refrigerator because you're so hot and you open up the door and the light doesn't come on because the refrigerator's busted. You gotta buy a new refrigerator. You finally, you cobble through your morning scenario, you get out to the car and you find there's a flat tire. You hop into Michaela's car and on the way out of the driveway, you pull over, you run over the cat. And so you layer these things together and by the time you get these things rolling, you've got about $25,000 that you've spent. Right. I believe for most people, that's probably about the right number. Worst day scenario, all that money in cash, the one thing that you don't want on top of your worst day is wondering how am I going to pay this $25,000? Mm -hmm. Am I going to have to sell stocks in order to get the money? You want to know that you know that you know that you can resolve the financial part of this worst day like that and go on about your business. I think it's fascinating. So, and you're right, everyone else will say, oh, you need six months in the checking account or savings yeah. account. And, and, and that doesn't make a lot of sense, I guess, because the money's just sitting there. I have noticed that, you know, just in my head over the last several years, you, you talk about uh, money market accounts and things like that. It, the interest rates virtually been zero, but sure. now I've been looking around. Coming up, they've gone up substantially yes. quickly. What is causing that? Well, the Fed raised rent interest rates dramatically through you know 21 through through the through even through a couple of months ago, and so rates were at zero. They've come up, they've normalized, all that kind of stuff. But they've actually normal. They've all gone beyond normalization on the shorter end of the curve. If if you look at a Treasury curve, and I know no one at home is doing that, and I would encourage you not. <laughs> Too. That's why guys like me get paid to do that stuff. But the shorter end of the curve, which influences money market rates, is actually higher than like the 10 year rate is right now. That's an indicative long term. That's indicative of a recessionary pressure. Doesn't mean we're going to have a recession, but rates that are higher in the short term than they are in the long term is anti capitalism. And it usually means we've got some, we've got some jostling out, as my mom would say, to do. <laughs> Things aren't quite where they should be. And so that's what's happening in money market rates. And what's happening with banks is banks are now competing for your money to stay at the bank because now you can take your money out of the bank for the first time in a long time and earn more fixed rates, more rates elsewhere. Yeah. And so banks are having to compete for those funds and the way they do it is by offering more money on those short-term money markets. Well, mm. a lot of people I've noticed selling businesses lately as yep. well, yep. Uh, influx of cash too, but yep. what do you tell someone when they're saying, you know, I don't know if I wanna sell my business or not, how does that conversation go? Yeah, so I, I have a, again, story, I have a rule for yeah. every entrepreneur and the, my rule is basically, we, I ask two very, very important questions. Number one, do you love what you do? And there better be an emphatic yes. Mm -hmm. Number two, do you have enough gas in the tank personally, emotionally for the next iteration your business is going to have to go through to be competitive? And if you can't answer both of those questions emphatically, yes, you need to sell, and I mean sell fast. Really? Um, because you're just not going to make it. You know, what, what's happening with AI and everything else in the world all around us, businesses are either moving into the future or they're getting left behind, and there's no room for any, any decision other than that. So sell the business, and then the ultimate question becomes when I sit down with, with M Michaela or you know, someone mm -hmm. we'd sit down and say, you know, when that business sells, what do we think it'll sell for? How much do you think you'll receive? How much income? do you need? Let's build a plan around that and a cash flow plan to make sure your goals are being accomplished. And that's a big part of what we time, a big part of what we spend our time doing. Awesome. Always a great appearance, John. Thanks for being here. Thank Any you. questions about your finances at all? John Ledford, uh, QR code, phone number. I'll connect you directly with him right now. A last quick break. When we return, it's what did we learn? Hurricane season definitely upon us, and we all think, oh, we'll go to the grocery store and get some water bottles and some paper towels, but 
there's something important in your house right now that is very important when it comes to hurricane season, and that is your windows. Dan Brigman is here. Renewal by Anderson. Dan, you think about sitting around during a hurricane party or when you're getting through a hurricane with your family, playing a game or whatever you're doing. And when those winds really start to pick up and you start hearing those windows vibrating, that gets scary. Why don't we think about windows when we think about hurricane prep? You're absolutely right, uh, Justin. It, it does get a little nerve wracking. And uh, one of the reasons we don't is because you know, we when we think about windows, we think about energy savings. We think about, hey, does the thing go up and down? Are the bugs coming in? Is there any water around my windows yeah. and things like that? We don't we don't think about that. You know, uh, an 80, 90 mile an hour wind it, it is enough wind to send something through that window. If you're sitting in there playing Monopoly, yeah. uh, send it through the window, hit you, and end the story. It's not not a good <laughs> thing at all. I put the QR code on the screen right now. Dan has a very special gift for you in preparation for hurricane season to help protect your family by changing and upgrading your windows. Dan, for these people at home, what are you going to do? Well, I can tell you this, it will not happen again uh, before hurricane season, <laughs> yeah. uh, which we're already in, right? And yeah. so it's 20% off of anything and everything that we sell. So that's our windows and our doors. And uh, so get I, it while you can <laughs> i appreciate it very much dan great to see you you will appreciate renewal by anderson i assure you that this is free by the way hit the qr code on the screen or call the phone number right now totally free consultation with their design consultant call renewal by anderson today i bought a new house the other day i was so excited i could not wait to move in and i did move in bad thing happened though oh. two days later the air conditioning unit totally went out. I was shocked. I spent all this money on the house already. Dang. Now I have to replace the air conditioning unit. That It was terrible. But then I remember we had Old Ash on the show. Remember them? Yes. And How were, could I forget? They were talking about Duquesne and Duquesne air conditioning units. I had never really heard of Duquesne before in the air conditioning world, but I said I need to figure out more about Duquesne. Thank goodness I did. Yeah, Duquesne's awesome. Duquesne offers you an award-winning product instead of being a simple air conditioner. This brand is designed to bring comfort to your home no matter how hot it is outside. And let's be and honest, in Florida, it gets <laughs> it hot. It was hot in my house. I'm sure. <laughs> when I think Duquesne, I know I chose a quality product. It has durability, energy efficiency, energy savings, and a ton of value for my hard-earned money. Duquesne's OmniGuard Total Corrosion Protection Technology protects your unit from deterioration. If you're looking to invest in your home, like this I did. product, like yeah. I did. I mean, I was well, investing in my home, of course. Great. Well, this product is for you. And I would recommend if you're investing in your own home, tell your contractor today to ask for Duquesne. And we wrap it up today, as always, with what did we learn? Michaela Nichols, what did you learn? I learned so much, yes, Justin you did. Clark. What? Yeah, now I know you said Michaela Nichols, I so I said your name back. It's just TV. It sounds yeah. official when Thanks. I say your first and last name. Yeah, I know. John crushed it again, per usual. Always. I found the charitable trust very interesting. I love the worst day scenario because I, people don't know how much cash they need to keep around, and you always hear the six month thing. Mm -hmm. The worst day scenario is, is fascinating to me. I really, really like that a lot. Yeah, worst day scenario well I mean it's not you don't want to think about the worst day because no, no, that's I stressful know. but the worst day scenario is a, fa a fascinating way to look at it for yeah, sure no, it's great smart excellent job thank you so much thank you to our amazing crew everyone here in the studio thanks for joining us today most importantly thank you for joining us every week see you again next week for more behind the law Your debt does not have to control your life. You have the power to potentially lower or even eliminate your debt. I'm attorney Justin Clark. Call me now for a free consultation or visit youhavepower.com and take back control of your financial life. I'm attorney Justin Clark. If you're worried about your student loan payments restarting, call me now or visit youhavepower.com. The proceeding was a paid advertisement. The views expressed were the sole responsibility of the advertiser.